Hello, granddaughter. I'm your grandmother. <laughs> What's your given name? My given name is Jean Tom Evans. Well, Jean Tom Tate Evans. <laughs> My given name is Jean Tom Tate Evans. What are you about to read to us? Well, this is my story about cancer and I'm very thankful that I had cancer because it uh, it just gave me more reasons to praise the Lord. You'll understand that as I go along. Okay? This is sort of book form. It's chapter one. The day it all began. <clears throat> October 26, 2016. Cancer, that is. My life changed. It was no longer mine. I had annual checkups. I felt great. But my doctor said, you need an ultrasound. I don't think so at my age. There's no need for that. She said, you're getting one. She saw something and suspected something. Three days later, the results came back. I was called into her office. Our daughter-in-law, Tracy, that's Tate's wife, asked if she could come along too. She's an RN and very smart. And she could explain to us in our language what they were telling us. The report was not good. She said, you have clear, care, clear cell cancer. That's bad. It's aggressive and later Tracy said, that's what Dr. Ta Takimoto said. And later, Tracy said, Tom, that's the worst news you could possibly get. The cancer team at Norton started running tests to a day. I mean, they were really in a hurry to get me under the knife. I was still feeling well. I couldn't believe I was sick. The doctor said, you must have surgery right away. My surgeon was only 32 and looked 14. All I could think of was so much to do in so little time. I really thought my good days were about over. I was heading for glory land in a hurry. I called Tracy and told her, I think I'm on my way to glory land and I need help. I have my clothes labeled and you are in charge. My closet is full, so I called a couple of people I thought could wear some of my clothes and loaded them up so Jay wouldn't be left with so much to do. I told who I wanted our 20 sewing machines to go to. Chapter two. I really think the doctors were preparing me for the worst. Robotic was the plan, but probably not possible. Don't be surprised if your entire front is opened up when you come to. We are not going to stop until we get it all. A team of doctors met and discussed the plan. They also had prayer. One doctor asked me if he could anoint my hand with oil. I said, yes, please do. The whole team said, anoint mine too. Chapter three. Jay and I go out for breakfast every morning and have our devotional. We walk by a blackboard which hangs on our front porch. We pass it 
on our way to the car. Next to the board is a tiny little basket that contains four pieces of chalk, two orange and two yellow. There's no way one can get them out unless you take the basket down and pour them out. The week before surgery, every morning, the orange chalk was hanging on the porch. I mean, was laying on the porch floor. It had been dropped rather hard because of crumbs around it. I picked the chalk up every morning and placed them back in the basket. This happened every morning that week. But how? I asked myself, what is going on on our porch in the middle of the night? We are We ask our family members that same question. Surgery day was fast approaching. I didn't sense the connection. Our minister, Pastor Ken, stopped by to have prayer with me. It was the day before surgery. He offered our prayer right there on the porch. After the prayer, I said, we have a mystery. Maybe you can help us solve it. I explained and pointed out the basket and chalk. You see, it's impossible for an animal to remove it. You couldn't pour only one color out every day, but it was only orange. Should we attach a camera? Pastor Ken said, I know what it is, Tom. I said, you do? It's an angel. That surprised me. Why would an angel visit me? They visit saints, not stinkers like me. Pastor Ken said, the angel came to comfort you and give you peace. Because, Tom, you're going to be okay. Chapter 4. I had my surgery the next day. No chalk fell that day, to everyone's surprise. I had robotic surgery. It wasn't severe like we were led to believe. And because it was contained in one area, Dr. Takemoto removed it all. She she, as, as preventative surgery, I mean, as preventative treatment, wanted me to follow up with chemo and radiation. So I took her advice. So when I get to heaven, I'm going to sneak up on him, and here's what I'm going to say. Okay. What did you do with Jay's memory and his teeth? He needs them. <laughs> That's the angel I'm talking to, by the way. And chapter four, or chapter five. What Jesus had to do to get my attention, and I say, thank you, Lord, for saving my life. And that's the end of that part of my story. Well. This is, uh, I felt so blessed to have survived cancer and feel so well. And I mean, I just felt like I should do something back. So this was, um, the Thanksgiving after chemo and everything. It was on thanks. It was the day before Thanksgiving Day. Okay, um, I thought this was 2016, and I thought I would make Thanksgiving pass. So I made four pass for Thanksgiving. We ate three, leaving one. Well, I was going to give it away. Jay said, 
just give it to a neighbor and I said I don't want to I don't want to give it to a neighbor I want to share it with someone who won't have a home-baked pie for Thanksgiving well we went back and forth on who we should give it to and we should and we could not agree of course we go out every morning and I grab the pie and Jay said don't take that pie and I said I want to I told him where I wanted to take it and he said too far just to deliver a pie he was still trying to get me to, to, to take it to a neighbor and I didn't want to do that this is where I want to take it so we stopped in the parking lot and he said it was a business and he, he didn't pull up into a parking place he just stopped in the middle of the parking lot and he said I'm not going to take it in and I said okay I'll take it in he usually saves my legs by doing my running I went in and the first person I saw I asked if she would like a pumpkin pie and she said did you bake it I said I did in your own kitchen I said I did she said for me I said yes she said no one has ever made me a pie and I said I did and I handed it to her and said happy Thanksgiving she said are you an angel I said no I just like to bake pies she said I want to show you something I have a pie dish with a lid and a pumpkin painted in the bottom of it and I raised that lid this morning and wished there would be a real pie inside I said your wishes come true she hugged me and thanked me it made me feel so good so next year I'm going to bake four pies all for giving away I hurried out to tell Jay and he said you should have taken some cool whip so the next year this is continued on this is 2017 this is not much but I just to keep up with it I made four peanut butter pies pumpkin before but peanut butter this time and our friends invited us for dinner by surprise so I gave her two of them and the other two we surprised two homeless families they were overjoyed the end of that story Come here, precious. This is our little addition to our family. He's our little white boy. He's a little rescue dog that Monty and Connie spotted on their way home from church. He was just down in the bushes, in the bulrushes. And they stopped and picked him up. And he was this adorable little seven-week-old mostly Bashan. we don't know exactly what he what he is but he's he looked like a ball of feathers a bowl of feathers stay here, here there you go stay right here stay right here honey. a boy a and boy. uh he was just so precious and he only weighed seven pounds no okay so monty had him for a little while trying to find the owner of him or else who you know how he got there but anyway they they made several attempts at trying to locate where he came from and at no 
avail. He couldn't, they could not find anything about him. He had no collar on, he had no chip, he had no ID on him at all. So they thought, well, Mom, Mom just had surgery. She needs exercise. So, also, uh, Mom's home all the time. All the time. So, that would be a good thing. So he wouldn't be in a cage. And he really, you know, he had, we had to go through potty training and everything. And so, he was such a good little boy, though. He was so good. And really, we didn't train him. He trained us. So anyway, we had this precious little dog. He's soon to be two. I mean, three. He's soon to be three in, in March. And he's just changed our life. And we love him to pieces. He's just so precious, so smart. And he's, well, everything you want in a little dog. He's just, he's just perfect. He's a little angel dog. So anyway, that's the end of that. My name is Jay Evans. <laughs> and what do we call you? Grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> Why, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> Did Grammy name you Grumpy? <laughs> no. I don't know. Ashley. 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 Did. Ashley did. Were you Grumpy back then? Oh, no. No. <laughs> I probably seemed Grumpy to her. Maybe, I don't know. <clears throat> That would, that's a long time ago, because Ashley's older than me. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. That would have been a long, long time ago. So when you were little, you and Jules used to hang out all the time. Mm -hmm. And you used to mostly go camping, right? We went camping, and uh, we, we <coughs> tried to, well, we, we raised some vegetables and things and, uh, to sell which didn't really work out. <laughs> Where did you grow the vegetables? On his dad's place, dad's farm. <clears throat> but uh, we used to spend a lot of good times together. <coughs> Is that thing on now? Mm-hmm, I turned it on. Oh, really? Yeah. But uh, Jules's dad, had a, he was a nurseryman. He had a big nursery and raised all kind of plants and things, you know, <clears throat> so on. And, uh, but, uh, and we, we ran around on the farm up there and used to do all kinds of things. But, you know, it was all good. It was just things that boys out in the country would like to do, you know. Mm -hmm. We, uh, uh, just did everything. Yeah, you used to hop trains, right? Well, when we were older, you know, we were much older, we, <clears throat> we did. We used to uh, jump on a train, we'd slow down. Sometimes the train would slow down in Crestwood, and we'd jump on it and uh, ride into LaGrange, because we knew at LaGrange uh, it had to slow down because the tracks were right through the middle of the town, you know. And uh, <clears throat> we did that a lot of times. And one time we talked to uh, Jim, Judy's husband, Jim McWilliams, and uh, a friend of his into going with us. And that was the first time they'd ever done it, and they did. And, uh, but when we got into the range, uh, we jumped off, uh, Billy and I did. <clears throat> and we waited and waited and waited for them, and they didn't, it took them forever to show up. And finally, the train went on through and uh, they uh, came walking down the tracks, and they had they had waited too late is what had happened. And the train had gotten, the, you know, the engine had gotten through the range, and it started picking up speed. And they were on the back end. <laughs> and they bailed off of there and skinned them all up their knees and tore Jim's watch up and, and everything. They were just really a mess when, when they, when we, to them. But uh, 
Yeah, yeah we stopped on the way down to going back to Crestwood. We stopped at the school on the school grounds down there. There was a pump, and we took went down there and pumped and washed them off. We had bad blood on. <laughs> But anyhow, we all survived. Mm -hmm. But uh, we uh, we had did a lot of things like that. That you know, I don't know if kids do things like that anymore. No, or not. <laughs> no, kids don't jump trains anymore. No, um, no, kids don't really go camping much anymore either. By themselves, no. Not by themselves. Uh huh. What about the mischief you got into at school several times? <sighs> Ooh, Grammy knows about that I stuff. I know, all of them. Well, Grammy, you come sit here too and talk with no, them. No, I'm not going to talk. What did I get into at school? Well, you just think about it. Well, I well mean, you, you can sort them out. See which one you want to tell. <laughs> how, how about, we'll try and get you around to it. We'll ask you some more questions. Mm -hmm. So, you had a bunch of siblings. Did you all mm -hmm. hang out together? Or did you mostly hang out with your with Jules and other people? Yeah, yeah, because all my my siblings were all quite a bit younger than I was. <clears throat> How many do you have? Well, there were five of us. I had four four brothers and sisters. I had two brothers and two sisters, and uh, they were all younger, and uh, so. You're the oldest. Uh huh. Hmm. Were you the ringleader? Well, at, at home, I kind of was a babysitter. <laughs> I feel that, Grumpy. Oldest yeah. sibling. Yeah. You get stuck with those right, ones, don't you? Yeah. But, uh, but as they got older, we, we, we did a lot of things together. And then I taught them to drive and all that kind of stuff, you know. And, and uh, taught them how to go fast and so forth. But, but uh, yeah, we had... We had a good life, but a poor life. I mean, you know, we didn't have anything. We didn't even have running water in the house, you know. And uh, <clears throat> but we we survived or got got by, and everything was fine. We had one had a heater, had a warm morning stove that heated the house. And uh, of course, Sonny and I lived up. I made us a little room up in the attic of the house, and we we slept up there. And, you made the room? Well... I mean, you made the attic into a place where you could live? Yeah, yeah, the attic was there, and I, uh, I was working up at Stetson's, and I would bring cardboard boxes home that refrigerators were packed in, mm -hmm. and uh, when I unpacked the refrigerator, I'd save all that cardboard and bring it home and put it on the, you know, like you would drywall. And to insulate it a little bit? No, it wasn't insulated. No, just to make walls? Yeah. Uh, just to cover up the, the uh, well, just to cover up the ceiling. Mm -hmm. But uh, we slept up there, and uh, I was on the fire department when I, I was working for Stessis, and we had a new fire department. We didn't have a fire department in Crestwood forever. Mm -hmm. And we got one to volunteer fire department, and I was one of the volunteers. And I worked at Stessis, and uh, Part time, and uh, one time uh, I was at work, and the uh, fire alarm went off, and I ran out and ran up to the firehouse, jumped in the fire truck, and I said, "Where was the fire?" And they said, "Down at A.J. Evans." And I said, "What?" <laughs> I jumped off that truck and took off running because I could get there quicker on foot than they could in that truck. And uh, I got down there and they put a ladder up into the, our room. That's where the fire was, up in our, our bedroom. And uh, two guys going up the ladder and I just hit that ladder and just went right by them and <laughs> knocked them off. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, what had happened, Sonny was laying up there in bed and I had, you know, we, a lot of stuff up there, but I had some gunpowder in a, a jar or a can, a, uh -huh. a can of gunpowder. And Sonny had gotten that gunpowder down and uh, he dropped a match in it. Because, it. because he was trying to play or? Well, yeah, he, yeah, it wasn't an accident. He was just fooling with it. 
want to see what it would do, I guess. And boy, it flared up and caught the room on fire. You know, a room full of cardboard. Yeah. And so they called the fire department, and I ended up down there with the fire department. But we got it out, and, and you know, got the room patched back up and so forth. But that's just one of the incidences we had there. But <coughs> you know the. The house was, like I said, it didn't have any, any heat except just a warm morning stove. And it was our job to bring the wood and coal in at night, you know, to put around the stove to put in. And uh, so. And that was in Crestwood? Mm hmm. So if you didn't have running water, how would you take a bath? Well, we had a, a big old number three wash tub, and we'd set it out in the middle of the floor, and then we'd heat water up on the stove, a gas, old gas stove. Oh, wow. They heat water up and put the water in that tub, and then, you know, whoever's turn it was to take, take a bath while everybody clear out of the kitchen and, and then, <laughs> Give them a chance. get in there and take a bath and, and so forth. You'd have to hope you didn't get in too soon, because I bet the water started out really hot. Well, we'd, we'd temper it before we got into it, yeah. But, uh, Anyhow, that, I mean, nobody in this day and time could understand how we lived and how we, you know, survived and enjoyed it, you know. Uh, Just didn't know any different. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and, and we had a well, that's where we got our water. And, and that was my job every night before I went to bed to, to get a bucket of water and bring it in and fill this water thing up in the sink, you know. And, uh, that's just the way we lived. Huh. And uh, it was, you know, it was okay. You know, I mean, we, you know, a lot of people lived that way mm -hmm. back then, but uh, not, not, not many. <laughs> when did you start driving? Uh, <clears throat> Well, I started driving probably when I was about 13 years old, but uh, <clears throat> when I was 14, um, of course, my dad had a garage there at where we lived uh, on, the, on the property, and he did uh, work for people, you know, that was what he did for a living. And uh, so one day I told him, I said, uh, Dee I said, I'd like to have a car. And he said, you would? And I said, yeah, I think I was 13 or 14 then. <clears throat> but he said, well, let's see, son. And uh, he said, he walked out, out of the garage with me. And I always had a bunch of old cars sitting around. He said, you see that car sitting over there? And I said, yes. And uh, he said, that, that's a, uh, a 34 Ford. And I said, uh-huh. And he said, uh, i tell you what I'll do. He said, I'll give you that car, if, but you got to get it running. He said, it doesn't have a motor in it. <laughs> and I said, well, where am I going to get a motor for it? And he said, underneath my workbench back there is a motor that you have, and you get it in it and get it running, and it's yours. So I did. I got old Jules, <clears throat> told him I was going to need some help putting a motor in a car. And uh, we did, but the thing was, when you got to, I, don't know, I hate to get into a long story, but, but the model, model, this was a 34 Model B car, Ford, mm -hmm. and it was the first year that they had, the, the engines had the fuel pump built into the engine. And, it, and the gas tank was in the rear, and it pumped the gas up to the motor. But this car was a Model B, and the gas tank was up on the cow, and it was fed the motor, the engine by gravity flow of the gasoline. So once I got the engine in it, why well, we realized then that we didn't have couldn't get gasoline to it, you know, to run it. So I was working at Stess's, and I got. A, empty jug that we used to get our syrup in for the fountain at the sweet shop. 
and I brought one of those empty jugs home, and uh, I put it up on the dash of the, the old car, and run a line down to the through the windshield and down to the engine, and uh, siphon the gas. <coughs> and Jules would sit over there in the passenger side. And he'd hold that can of gas up on the winds up on the dash, and we'd run all over all, every gravel road in Old County. We'd run run over it until we started getting low on gas. But anyhow, Dee Dee one day said, uh, told me, he said, you know, I said they make an electric fuel pump that would work for on that. I said, well, how much is it? He told me. I said, well, I don't have the money, you know, so I, when I save up the money, I'll let you get me one. He did, so. I put an electric fuel pump on it. Jewel didn't have to hold that jug up there anymore. <laughs> Makes for a much more enjoyable ride, mm -hmm. I'd say, not having to hold a gas can. <laughs> yep. So what kind of, was Stess just like a general store? Well, actually, Stess was a hardware store. Oh. And they, it was hardware, and they had a, a sweet shop oh, okay. in it. You know, you go in the door, of course, behind it was Mr. Measle's office. He was a bookkeeper. And then all this was hardware, and upstairs was hardware. And uh, the, the sweet shop was on the right as you went in. For, like, ice cream and soda? And yeah. And Mrs. Way. Her name was Miss, Mrs. Way. She was uh, took care of the sweet shop. She and Miss Tess did. And uh, every afternoon when I'd come in from school and go upstairs, because as the merchandise would come in, they'd unload it from Belknap, and it was my job to go up there and price everything. You know, I'd run off stickers and mm -hmm. put on stuff and everything. I, so every afternoon when I'd go up there, <clears throat> as soon as I got upstairs, here comes Miss Way with a great big milkshake. And uh, she'd make me a big milkshake every every afternoon. And finally, Mr. Measle told Miss Tess, and they made her quit giving me milkshakes. <laughs> How much did you get paid? Well, I think I started out about 40 cents an hour. and. Uh, I don't know when I left there. Of course, I, I, I you know, I, I went, went to work there when I was 14, and I, I left at one point, and I went to work at GE, I think. And uh, I don't know how, I, I can't really think just exactly how things happened, but anyhow, uh, I didn't, I wasn't happy with things at GE or something, and uh, Milton Carl said, what do you make there? And I told him, and he said, well, I'll pay you that if you want to come back and go to work for us. So I did, and I went back and went to work for them. And I worked there for a long time. But anyhow, that was pretty much my growing up in, in Crestwood. So is this Stess, is that the same Stess as the funeral home? Uh-huh. Same people? Well, no, not oh. the same people, because uh, the Stesses are, uh, you know, they, they deceased, and Miss Stess died, mm -hmm. and uh, Milton Carl died, and Clayton, I think Clayton might still be living. He's 101, I think, or something like that. Uh, but uh, Jules and I went to his 100th birthday party they had. That was a year ago. But uh, anyhow, it, it was it was it was you know I thought it was a good life. I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. But uh, I knew there were a lot of people that a lot of kids at school that seemed to be rich because <laughs> they had running water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it you know I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you met Grammy? I was, uh, what was that for? I was asking if she was in there. Oh, uh, I, I think I was, uh, I don't know, I was 17, I guess, something like that. At school? 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oldham County. Uh huh. Yeah, she had. Uh, she was a, a Lagrange School student, and I was a Crestwood student. And that's what they did when they built Oldham County. They consolidated the mm -hmm. schools. And uh, I was dating this girl. I've been dating her for several years. And uh, anyhow, uh, when I, I saw Tom up there, when we I got up to Oldham County, I, I, well, actually, this this guy was showing me around. You know, he knew he was from Lagrange. He knew everybody. He said, "See that girl there?" He said, "Boy, she's something about He didn't get a date with her, <laughs> and he he was pointing out everything for me. You know, mm -hmm. he's a big shot." And uh, see that guy there? You don't want to mess with him, you know, and this, that, and the other. And uh, <clears throat> so anyhow, I said, who's that girl walking down the hall there? And he said, oh, you don't want anything to do with her. I said, she's a, she's a, real, she's a good girl. I said, you don't want anything to do with her. And I, I just ignored him. I, that's what I wanted. I wanted a good girl. <laughs> Did and, she go back Tom in high school? Uh-huh. Grammy? Jean Thomas is what Jean I call her. Grammy, yeah. did you always go by Tom or did you go by Gene Thomas? I went by, uh, you went by what? I went by Gene Thomas through elementary. Yeah. And then in high school, it was kind of like Gene Tate. But anyhow, I, I, I moved over there where she was sitting in school. I moved over by her. And I said, hi, I said, I'm, I'm Jay Evans. She said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I uh, struck up a conversation with her, and I, I asked her for a date, and she wouldn't go out with me. <laughs> I tried several times, and she'd always say no. And uh, of course, she wouldn't go out, period, unless she, you know, asked her mother if it was all right and all that. But, Oh yeah, I asked her one time. I found out she went to the Methodist Church there in Lagrange, and of course I went to the Methodist Church in Crestwood. And I finally, one time, I said, I moved over there, and I said, "Hey, I said, why don't you uh, go to church with me Sunday morning?" And uh, she said, "Well, uh, I'll ask my mother." So she did, and uh, her mother said it was all right. So I said, well, I'll pick you up Sunday morning and we'll go to church, and I did, so that was our first date. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good date, mm -hmm. going to church. Mm -hmm. It's a good place to start. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, everybody up in the choir <coughs> at, at, our, at my church, of course, most all of them were, the young ones were in school and they knew both of us and they were just up there talking to each other. <laughs> I walked in the door with Tom. <laughs> But anyhow, we we had a good 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 time together. And you went to college for a semester, right? Uh huh. Where did you go? Uh, uh Kentucky Westland. Where is that? Owensboro. Oh okay. Uh -huh. Did you know that? That's where I went, and of course I was paying my own way, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, my money didn't last very long. And, uh, what did you want to study? Well, I hadn't really figured what I wanted to do, to tell you the truth. I was just trying to get the basics, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, you know, I realized that I, w I wasn't going to be able to, to do it, because I mean, you know, of course, working three months in the summertime, making a dollar an hour is not going to pay much tuition, you know. Mm -hmm. And but I had saved some money and enough to keep me in there one semester. <clears throat> and uh, and then we uh, Tom got Tom went with me, and uh, she got a little grant from the church and helped her out. So anyhow. Did Grammy get a grant because she was smarter than you? Well, probably. <laughs> I didn't try to get one from the church because she got one. I didn't want to, you know, overload the church. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, she had foot trouble then. And uh, we, uh, 
<clears throat> of course, she was in the girls' dorm, I was in the boys, and, and I, uh, uh, she, her, what, wasn't it your foot, honey? Yeah. Yes, both feet. Both feet got to bother her. I mean, you know, she, she just, she couldn't hardly walk. And, uh, and yeah, she couldn't. I had to go upstairs in the dorm and get her and bring her down the steps. I carried you down the steps, didn't I? Yeah, she had to. Yeah, I picked her up and carried her down the steps in the dorm and put her in my car. I was driving a little 44 convertible and put her in that and uh, took her home and I just stayed home too. That was the end of our <laughs> college career. <Yeah. coughs> but, what was your favorite car that you had? Over all the years, do you have a favorite? Honey, I, I, I really have had so many cars in my life. I mean, it's, it's really hard to imagine because, you know, I'd buy one, fix it up, and drive it, and, set, and then I'd sell it, and buy another one, and fix it up, and do the same thing. But, you know, and I had a, a bunch of Corvettes, and uh, <clears throat> I had some really neat 44 uh, convertibles, and, you know, it's just, uh, it just, it's really hard to imagine. Mm -hmm. But it's, that was my my love, you know, that was my thing. I love fixing up cars, and of course I had a place to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I put motors in them, swap motors and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Well, you, you know. learned early. Yeah. Because right. you had to. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, I used to do it there in Deedee's Garage. Of course, I couldn't do it during the day, but I'd work out there at night, you know, mm -hmm. after it was closed up. and. Mm -hmm. and change engines or do whatever needed to be done to my old cars. Mm -hmm. but, so when did you and Grammy get married? Uh, what year was it we got married, honey? 56. You want to come in here and set him straight? <laughs> she won't join you. I know. She's, she's, she's 56. 56? Yeah. 1956, I guess, when we got married. So that was how many years ago? 62? 63. 63. Now it's 2019. Wow. Jules was in my wedding. My dad, Dee Dee, was my best man. And uh, we had a bunch of people in our wedding. <laughs> I don't know, who all did we have, honey, in that group back there? I had... Well, they wouldn't know them, honey. No, I know. I was just trying to think of some of the names of some of the guys. Al Wilmer. Yeah. Dee Dee. Uh, Ronald Hall was here. Yeah, Ronald was there, and he was part uh, of it. The yeah, we... Dee Dee. I had a bunch of, bunch of friends, and then... Were your brothers in it? Uh... Sonny was, yeah. Sonny uh -huh. was in it. Sonny was in it. My dad was my best man. Told you that. But then we had uh, the uh, people that owned the, uh, what was the name of the motel out there? The Melrose. Melrose. Melrose Motel knew us, and they gave us the honeymoon suite for our wedding present. Wow, well, that's nice. And, uh, so we went out there, and I, <clears throat> I was driving a new. Daddy rented from, rented from. That's what. That's who Monty rented from. Yeah, oh, yeah. the property. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they owned all that in there, the station mm -hmm. and everything, and we bought the station from them. But uh, uh, yeah, we. I asked them if I could park my car in the, their garage back there at their house. Their house was back by, pretty far back, a little lane behind the motel. Because I, I knew that the guys would vandalize my car and I had a new, I don't know, 56 Ford or something. But uh, anyhow, so we, we parked back there and carried our luggage and walked up the lane there back to, to the motel. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, 
And we're still married. <laughs> 63 years later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got some wonderful grandkids and kids and grandkids to, to be thankful for. Who's your favorite grandkid? Uh, I guess Madison. <laughs> <laughs> it's on oh. video now. <laughs> yeah. Take it back. No, <laughs> oh, no, I don't have a favorite. They all, we love them all. <laughs> uh, uh, we're blessed. Mm -hmm. No question about it. And you have four kids. Uh huh. I have four kids, and I'm, I don't know how, how many grandkids we got all together, Tom. Well, yeah. She has to stop and count them up too, well, huh? Well, I must count them. There's uh, 30. Well, there's counting everybody. Counting kids, nine great grandkids. Well, we've got more than. I think. Well, yeah, we don't have a bad one in a bunch. <laughs> got, got lucky. Yeah. We've got Got Lauren, and we've got Drew and uh, Evan. Uh -huh. But anyhow, we, we, uh, we've, we've survived it thus far. And you've survived uh, a new puppy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We weren't going to have any more dogs until Monty brought us this thing. And I said, if you pick him up, why don't you keep him? Dad, I can't. We, we both worked and we couldn't take care of him. And so we've got him and he's all right. He's not, he's not hard to take care of. And everybody likes him. How long have you been coming to Florida, do you know? Uh, since 85. Since 85? Wow. Was that our first year to spend? Uh, was it? We bought our condo. Yeah, we bought a condominium down here in Delray. And uh, uh, her sister Jenner lived in an apartment. They had an apartment across the street from where we were. And <clears throat> so we, we stayed in that for I don't know how many years that we came down there to that apartment. Was that your little one right on the beach? Or was there one before that one? That, no, that was it. That was it? Yeah. Was it blue on the outside? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But it, it was it was, a, it was an apartment building. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't just one. It was <clears throat> uh, had several apartments in it. We had one. and. Uh, and, but we weren't on the beach. We we were mm -hmm. just walk up the sidewalk mm -hmm. to the beach, you know, every day. And uh, and we bought another one in there. Came up for sale. We bought it and uh, fixed it up and sold it. But, in that uh, same building. Mm -hmm. And then you bought your house. I had two in there. Yeah, we bought a bought a, a house that was out from the ocean zone. As a matter of fact, it was uh, made by the same people that built this house. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we remember that house. Uh -huh. And you had that pool in the back. Yeah. And you used to swim in that almost every day, didn't you? I guess. I don't remember it, but I guess I did. <laughs> uh. What year did you all retire? Honey, I can't tell you right now. It's late in the day and, and uh, uh, late in the years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, can you believe that? Your son. second son, and your second child is going to be 60 tomorrow. Yeah. That is hard to believe. Because if he's 60, that means that you're pretty old. <laughs> at least, I'm at least 65. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what. It, it gets by in a hurry, and, and you know I've, I've had old people tell me that all my life, and now old people tell you all that. And so enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're trying to. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, uh, I wish.
wish uh, I wish you know, I had done this with you before Jules mm-hmm. had this terrible accident because he and I did so many things together. And I'd like for both of us to have been able to talk to to you mm-hmm. <laughs> or record some of it. Well, at least we have some of the stories that you can tell us. Mm-hmm. Right, so that's good that we have at least some of the stories. Mm-hmm. But, you know, things are so different. I remember this one, we had neighbors that lived beside us in Crestwood there. And th- this, uh, and we didn't have a phone. And uh, so anyhow, somebody from the house over came over and told me, he said, uh, you, somebody's on our phone and wants to talk to you. And I said, really? And uh, so I went over, climbed the fence, and went over there in the house. <laughs> and uh, this girl was on the phone and said, this is Juanita, Jay. And I said, well, hi. And she said, we're getting ready to have, uh, uh, I don't know who was sponsoring it, a hayride. And this girl, friend of mine, asked me to call you and see if you would go with her as her date on this hayride. <laughs> and I said, well, I said, yeah, I said, I guess so. And anyhow, uh, I did. And uh, we dated for five years, and uh, she was in college. <clears throat> she was a, a great ahead of me in, in high school. She was in college, and uh, that's when I met Tom. Oh, and she was gone. Yeah, and, uh, oh gosh. Was she mad at you? <laughs> so, and I'd always meet her. When she got on weekends, and she'd come in, she'd ride in with somebody from Eastern, and I'd pick her up. As a real, I picked her up, and I took her to. She wanted to go to her girlfriend's house, and I t- took her out. I said, "I got to tell you something." And she said, "What's that?" And I said, "Well, I said I met another girl," and uh, I said, "So I, I, we won't be going together anymore." Oh, she got so mad at me. She had something in her hand. I don't know what it was. She swung that thing around and hit me right in the mouth. <laughs> she got out of the car and pushed off. She was crying and carrying on. So that was it for us. You never heard from her again? Well, I've seen her. I mean, you know, she's married and everything. As a matter of fact, we heard that she named one of her boys after me. Oh man, never got over you. Did quite didn't, the didn't, impression. Didn't, didn't we somebody tell us that, honey? What? Helen, did she name one of her boys Jay or something? Yeah, she did. Oh my gosh, she yeah. never got over you. <laughs> <laughs> oh mercy. Well, if Jay could have gone to the funeral, she would have been there. To Jules's? Jules's yeah. So she's still living? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I've run into her once or twice, you know, at funerals or something like do that. Do you block your face no, every time? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I always go over and talk to her, say hi to her, and talk to her and everything. And her husband is never there. He's always, he, he goes over out of the way someplace and lets us talk. Well, he doesn't want to be uh, near and accidentally get hit while she's hitting you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, that, that's time gone by. Yeah. That's a funny story, though. Mm-hmm. Funny. Not for her, I guess. <laughs> Funnier for us to relive than her. Yeah. Well, thank you, Grumpy. Well, I don't think I gave you much. But I think you did. Oh, yeah. I think both so Matt and I learned stuff about you we didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Grumpy, how old are you right now? I think I'm... 38. 38? Oh, okay. Now, That's what we thought. Yeah, <laughs> Sounds about right. That's you thought, yeah. Uh, I don't know how, how what, what year is this? 83 in July. 80, 83 in July? Wow. That doesn't seem possible. You were just, you me. had your numbers swapped. 
Yeah. 38. I, I was thinking it was 38, but she said 83. <laughs> but anyway, I had a fun life. I really did. I mean, I don't regret it because it just, you know, we were we were poor, but we weren't the only ones. There were a lot of people poor back then. You know. Uh huh. Everybody's poor back then. But, uh, well, yeah, we made the best of our time. Well, thanks for your time. Jules and I were big buddies. We, uh, we spent so much time together. I mean, just, mm -hmm. you know, every time we had a chance, we'd be together. <clears throat> and he, uh, he and I camped together, you know, I'm sure you've heard us talk about mm -hmm. that. And, uh, Good memories. Uh-huh. Yeah, I hated it. You were lucky to have somebody like Jules your whole life, and he uh -huh. was lucky to have you. Yeah, we, we, we really were crazy about each other. We were always going to build something. It would fly or go fast or something. <laughs> uh, mm -mm. Madison's trying to get into the screen. She Favorite wants, grandchild. She wants that attention. Yeah. <laughs>